Welcome back. Today our commander is Rosie Cotton of Southlane, and this is one of the best underlooked commanders of the LOTR set. So when it enters a battlefield, you create a food token, which is kind of uninteresting. But the second ability is the one that we're going to be paying attention to, which is whenever you create a token, you put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature you control other than Rosie. So we're going to be creating a lot of tokens, getting a lot of plus one plus one counters, and we're just going to have a lot of ridiculousness throughout the deck. And also I'm going to do regular raw footage of me just recording and me just playing the games with of course commentary but it's not going to be sped up and it's not going to be voiced over it's just going to be the actual footage it's going to be a very very fun and let's see how you guys like it so let's just get right onto the games game one our hand is looking okay um i think we'll keep this one just because the intangible virtue and restoration is too hard to pass on the lands might be an issue in the future though we're going against kiora sovereign of the deep so it might be an interesting matchup if they're able to get their commander out and all their shenanigans out very quickly because it's a merfolk and merfolks are always annoying there's a land that we needed so we can go intangible virtue here and let's see what they go on their turn two plays a land and just passes okay so we're going to play our restoration of a john joe we're going to grab a plains um just to get some more landfall and some more land in general We'll go Rosie Cotton next turn or Absent Battle Priest unless we get something else. Let's see what they play. There's a Gwenna, so they'll be able to get their commander out next turn. Charge of them, the Mites might be able to get us some more tokens. I guess we can just do our land here and go with... I think Rosie Cotton will be the best play and then go Charge of the Mites next turn. Because Cure is going to be an issue and we just need to start dealing some damage and get our tokens out there to where we can get more counters on our creatures. Okay, so he just played Cure. Restoration is going to come transformed into our Architect of Restoration. We're going to do Charge of the Mites, targeting the two colorless 1-1 one, one Mites. So we get a couple of Rosy Cotton triggers here. And then we're going to do those on... I guess we can do them both on the 1-1s. One, or the two twos now that have vigilance and have infect and we'll just do a food here and let's see what he's going to do in response nothing he does have the one open island we pass back to him let's see if he swings in with his cure this turn there's the kraken so he's going to be able to basically cascade and let's see what he gets a merfolk trickster so he's going to tap our rosy cotton it loses all its abilities that's annoying. Okay, that's all right. It just gives him an anthem for his merfolks. And we'll just play the planes here. We're going to go with the Eternal Wanderer just to get the 2-2. Two, two. Or we might... I think that might be the better play. We're just going to basically board wipe with Eternal Wanderer. We're going to target our Architect of Restoration. And we'll give them... We can give them the merfolk trickster because that won't do anything if it's on the battlefield. We grab a rosy cotton back and let's see we'll swing in with our architect to make a one one and he just does nothing that's good for us okay so he's gonna play a tolarian kraken that's fine let's see if he swings in he does not which would make sense we're gonna do the fell at our retreat here get the landfall trigger we're gonna do a two two white cat beast and then we're also gonna grab uh we're just gonna grab the 2-2 two, two here with double strike i guess we can pass it back to him and i don't know if he's going to do anything he gets a tolarian kraken he's going to pay probably some to tap yep pays to tap our architect of restoration and he plays a lower scale kotal okay so he gets some more mana i guess swings in with his tolarian we're going to just block with the samurai so our eternal wanderer won't die and he's just going to do a double strike, so it won't matter. It kills his Tolarian Kraken, and we do get a Victory's Envoy. So I think that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do the Envoy, grab another 2-2 with double strike, and that's going to have Vigilance still because of the Intangible Virtue. And I guess we'll just swing in with the Architect of Restoration. He can kill it if he wants, but I don't think he wants to get rid of both his cards, which he doesn't. He gets to put a plus one plus one counter on the Kotal. And he gets his cure back out there. So that's going to be a little annoying for us. We're going to get a Victor's Envoy, putting a plus one, plus one on everything. We can make them all have a lifelink, or we can go Reverent Hoplite. I think the lifelink matters more, so we can get more life. And go with Eternal Wanderer with a Double Strike again. And I think we'll just go for a 
we're just going to pass a turn, actually, because we can get all of our creatures next turn have a lifelink, except our victory's envoy. Let's see what he plays or ends up playing. If it's something that we can't deal with, we might have an issue. If it's like a coma, that might be terrible. Okay, so he gets a Nimbus something, whatever that is. It just triggers his Kiora again. He's going to get be able to get a 6 or 8 drop off the top. Okay, so he just gets to return something to our hand. That's fine. And, oh, he just plays it. That's okay. That's whatever. Victory's Envoy just passes back. We get a plus one, plus one on everything. We'll go Rosie Cotton. Actually, we're going to do fill out our retreat, giving, uh, I think we'll just put a plus one, plus one counter on everything and give them all vigilance. Go Rosie Cotton. And let's see what he's going to play. He does not have anything in response. So that's great for us. We can just roll a little bit. We're going to put it on our big samurai here so it's a 7-7 seven, seven. go eternal wanderer we're going to i guess eternal wanderer some target creature of his we can do the nimbus swimmer exiling it so next turn when it blinks back it will just be dead and i think we'll sacrifice the food here to gain three life next turn we do reverend hoplite we get a bunch of triggers because we have a lot of devotion so i think we're just going to swing in with a 7-7 seven, seven with double strike and lifelink so we'll be able to get a bunch of life back let's see what he does he blocks with the trickster and we get quite a bit of life we only get one trigger though since the double strike didn't go through and he gets another counter on the lore still kodal the watcher in the water he gets another cure trigger not great for us he gets a cure planeswalker the tide's fury that's fine chromatic lanterns for some more mana for him Let's see what he ends up doing with Kiora, because it can do a lot of stuff. He gets to untap it, but it doesn't. It just removes a counter. We get to exile it and return it. It gets to die because of its ability. And we go Reverend Hoplite here. We're going to just uh, create another 2-2, two -two, and he scoops. Great for us. Team 2, our hand is looking actually really good with the swords and the restoration. I think we'll keep it. We're going against Sauron, so there's going to be a lot of orcs and just a lot of armies that are going to be amassed. So we'll need the sorts of plowshares to just get rid of stuff and the day of judgment will be good in case he gets out of hand very quickly because that seems to be the case with this deck. It's taking a little bit to decide what he's going to do with his hand though. Let's hope that he can get rid of it pretty quickly and start playing the game here. Okay, so we're going to play just the planes. We'll just pass it back to him. A turn two drop would be nice. Just basically anything that's kind of scary it just is a 1-1 one, one with menace and then it tempts him when it dies that's fine for us though there's our two drop that we needed the birth of miletus and we get to search for eight planes next turn we get a zero four and we also get to gain two life on the last turn that it triggers let's see what he plays turn two he just swings in with the one one that's fine with us i guess we can do restoration of a john joe next turn and Let's see what he's going to end up doing. He's taking a little bit. 1-1. One, one, that's not going to be much damage. And Even if he had something to boost it, I don't even know what he would have played. Infuriate, maybe? I guess we can do Restoration here. We're going to grab a Plains. We have two th Birth of Miletuses just off the bat. That's kind of fun. And let's see if he plays anything to kill it. Okay, so he just destroys our 0-4. Even though we couldn't have blocked it with the menace creature that he has grab the planes pass it back to him next turn we do rosy cotton so we can get the restoration of a john joe trigger when it makes the one one spirits rarim is gonna swing us and deal him another damage i don't think we can discard to get anything back because we have nothing in our graveyard and the birth of miletus is just gonna die again we'll go with rosy cotton here just to get the extra trigger we can't get the plus one plus one counter because it has to be on something else, but that's okay for us either way. We're we'll pass back to him. Sauron's looking kind of scary right now. He doesn't have enough land though, so it's not much of a threat. And we do have the swords just to get rid of it. Scroll of a Sealder is going to come out here. He's going to gain control of our food. Okay. I'm glad that he's hungry. Makes his Rarm Lancer a ring bearer. And it's our turn now. So we get a Vanquish the Horde. That's not the best. We can make the 1-1 one, one if, well, next turn. 
Or we might just do Castle Ardenvale just to get the extra 1-1 one, one to boost up our restoration. I think that's the plan here. Or we'll boost up the token because we can't attack with restoration anyways. And if he swings in, we can block it. We'll double block without having something die. And he gets to tap them anyways with the scroll of a seal door. Great. So either way, he's just going to get in with some damage. Let's see what he plays because he does have the black now hopefully open up his hand the clarion spirit next turn is looking also really good and the immortal sun's looking really good goth mog okay so he gets to a mass one they all have death touch that's very annoying okay rotherham's gonna deal us another damage we go with the actually we go clarion spirit bastard's lieutenant because we can get basically an infinite trigger with rosie Whenever a creature with a plus one plus one counter dice, we get to make another one. So I guess we'll make the one one that has flying have the plus one plus one counter and do it with the. I guess we do it with itself because we can just make it die and we can get a two two back. As long as we have Rosie Cotton out there, we have infinite tokens that have plus one plus one counters on them. So if any of our creatures dies, Bastry Lieutenant triggers. And let's see what he gets. He gets five lands. So next turn he has Sauron guaranteed because that's just way too good for him to pass up on. So he gets to mass when it dies. The Herald of the Dread Horde and Gollum's Bite kills our Rosy Cotton. Not the greatest for us. Not the greatest at all. Rarm Lancer is going to deal us another damage because it can't be blocked. And I guess we'll just do... Hmm, the Immortal Sun's looking really good as well. I think we'd go Rosy Cotton again, just to have the insurance for the Bastard's Lieutenant. And we'll go Iron Apprentice as well. We get a 1-1. One, one. Again, we're going to put it on the 1-1 one, one that we just created. It gets a plus one, plus one counter. So we're looking pretty good right now. If he plays another land, it's going to be a little scary since we can't immediately get rid of it with swords. And he also has the Golem's Bite from the Graveyard. That's okay either way. Whatever he gets out there, he gets out there. The orcs is kind of looking... Okay, the math of Sauron. That's kind of scary. So he gets to amass quite a bit. Gets a mass four. That's scary. There's a 5-5 five five with death touch coming in. And a 1-1. One one. Okay, I think we do block, block, block with the 5-5 five five so we can kill it. And just let the 1-1 one one come through. Because then we can get a bunch of 2-2s two back off of Bastry's Lieutenant and we are able to move the counters from the Iron Apprentice onto something else like one of the creatures that we just created. So we get a bunch of Bastry's Lieutenant triggers to create a bunch of 2-2s. Two We're going to put it on the Architect of Restoration. So all of our stuff has a plus one plus one counter except Rosie Cotton. And we're just going to put one on every single one of the Knights that we make. That have Vigilance, which is really good for us as well. And we get a star pupil, so our Iron Apprentice is just recycled. But we're just going to do the Immortal Sun here so we can get a huge Anthem here. He has nothing with Death Touch, so I guess we can swing in with all of the things that we just made. The 4-4 four, four Knights. And he's probably going to block one of them, potentially. Or he's going to take 12, which is going to be quite a bit of damage. And they all are untapped since they have Vigilance. He's going to probably block it with the Herald of the Dread Horde, though. And he blocks one with the Mouth of Sauron. Okay, why not the Dread Horde? I okay i doesn't even get any triggers off of it herald of the dread horde would have got him something see if he gets a land whatever he drew for turn we do get double draws though okay so he gets to return the mouth of sauron back out there and gets another raher lancer trigger since the ring tempted him let's see he can't play his commander now he's kind of struggling without his commander that's kind of funny and we do have a really nice board golem's bite's gonna just okay he gets to tempt him again he has three ring temptations he gets to draw and then discard what else does it do one of those creature attacks okay that's all that it does that's fine we don't even have the board wipe yet just because we have a lot of creatures out there and he scoops that's really good for us game three our hand is looking very interesting with iron apprentice but we do have a lot of land so we can get our rosy cotton so i think we'll keep it here Going against Aethrios. That's just a bunch of kill. And he gets to bring our stuff back. That's just going to be really annoying if he gets it out there quick enough. Let's see if he keeps his hand or decides on what he's going to do. Because it's his turn. 
Scored Barons, he gets to gain a life. That's fine. We go Iron Apprentice here. Sort our hand out a little bit. And let's see what he does. If you guys like this form of commentary better, please vote down below in the comments. I just wanted to try it out to see if you guys liked it. Instead of the sped up version, we're going to go with the Rosy Cotton this turn. Oh, wait, we can't because we don't have enough mana. That was kind of funny. Okay, Aetherios is going to be interesting when it comes out there. The Celesta. So he does have a mana rock out there. So potentially more mana stuff is going to come out. Rosy Cotton's coming out. We're going to put it on our Iron Apprentice. So we can boost that up and potentially put all of its counters on Rosy Cotton when it dies. And if, even if he gets it with Aetherios, I don't think it will trigger because he just gets to take control. Let's see what it does. I think that's what it does. Oh, he gets to exile and then return it back. Okay, so he does get the Iron Apprentice even if it dies. We go with Leonin War Leader here because we can get a bunch of tokens out there. We're going to swing in for a total of three. He gets to gain two of that back with Cosmos Elixir, so that's okay. Let's see if he gets another Mana Rock out there. Or something similar to that. He gets another mana rock, called it, and let's see if he plays something else, because he does have two mana. Gets rid of our Leon and War Leader. That's kind of sad. Cosmos gains him two life and lets him scry. The Cosmos on here is overpowered. I guess we go Elspeth here, and we'll just put a Vigilance and a plus one plus one counter on the. I think we we'll go Iron Apprentice here. We'll go do the Vigilance so it's boosted, and I think it moves all of its counters to something else. Yep, it moves all of its counters. So when it dies, it'll be really good because Elspeth puts a bunch of counters on everything. Invasion of Gokban, or Go Backhand. Okay, so it gets to exile something, and it costs two more. That's fine, I guess. It's just going to be annoying. So our Eternal Wanderer is basically a dud now, and it gets a Vengeful Reaper. So it's a 2-3 with, I think, haste. I think it does have haste. Yep, it does, and he's probably just going to try and kill... The Gobakan. Next turn, we give the Vengeful, or not the Vengeful Reaper, the Iron Apprentice flying. Or, yeah, we give, we do Ozolith here. We go Absent Battle Priest, so we don't have to worry about Life Link. We're also going to give it flying, so we can block the Vengeful Reaper from getting whatever shenanigans he's going to get from the invasion. Yeah, that's going to be really annoying. We're just going to attack with both of our stuff because it has vigilance and our iron apprentice has lifelink and we do get to put it on the rosy cotton so it will have flying and vigilance as well let's see what he's going to play he does have enough to play his commander which is probably a big potential or the eternal wanderer of his own he might make us sacrifice all of our stuff which he does he's probably going to get rid of our apprentice he's probably going to choose the battle priest which he does end up doing so we do get the trigger from the Iron Apprentice, that's okay, and we do get a trigger from the Ozolith. That's going to be interesting, so we get both. Well, that's great. And he does swing into our Elspeth. I won't block here, because Absent Battle Priest needs to live. And he does get the Cosmos Elixir trigger at the end step. Okay, so I think we go with Rosy Cotton again to make a food token, and we also get to put a plus plus one counter on the Absent Battle Priest, play the Mox Amber as well, and then we go with Elspeth with another plus one plus one counter, we're going to do the first strikes, we can get rid of the Death Touch, and then we're going to swing in, targeting the Emperor, we're going to put all this stuff on Rosy Cotton, because that'll be even better for us, swing into the Emperor, or the Wanderer, and that's the only one we can swing in with, we do get the life back, and that's good for us. And we have to pass it back to him. Gets another replicating ring trigger. He can play his commander, which he's going to do finally. So that's out of the way. He does have indestructible, so that's going to be annoying. And he get, does get to get it back if he swings in, which he probably will. Or he doesn't. That's good for us. We don't have enough. We're one mana short. We're going to play the raise the alarm. Rosy Khan's going to trigger a couple times. We're going to put it on both of those tokens that we just created. So they'll both have lifelink automatically from the Abs and Battle Priest. And we do have the Day of Judgment. We're not going to use it. We're just going to gain some life off of the food. And I think we'll put the plus one plus one on one of the tokens that we just created. Or we'll put it on the Rosy Cotton. We're going to give it First Strike. So we'll have two of them with First Strike, Vigilance, Flying, and Lifelink. So that's really good for us. Swinging with both of them. And it won't be able to kill it with the Vengeful Reaper because it has First Strike. 
So it's just going to kill it without killing our absent battle priest. And he does get the Aetheros trigger, so he does get to put it back. It just exiles and returns it. So that's perfectly fine with us. Absent battle priest allows us to gain a bunch of life along with Rosy Cotton. We also can sacrifice a food because we do have enough mana for that with the Mox Amber and the two planes if we needed them. Celeste is going to trigger. He makes it nighttime or daytime. Either way, he gets to gain a life. And he can draw and discard a card so that's what he's gonna do to hopefully dig for something because our board's a little scary for him and i don't think he got anything that he wanted he did not so aetheros he's gonna put another coin counter on the vengeful reaper cosmos is allowing him to gain a little bit more life and to scry and we get a land so we can play the eternal wanderer here we're going to create a 2-2 with double strike obviously or yeah we're gonna create the 2-2 double strike Actually, no, we're going to exile the Eventual Reaper. What am I thinking? And then we do Elspeth, creating the seven or the three threes. Oh, wait, the Aetherios triggers off of exile. Well, that's fine. It gets rid of the coin counter. Elspeth's going to trigger. We're going to get a bunch of three threes, get five of them. Get a lot of rosy cotton triggers here. So they're going to all have lifelink. Going to give one of them to every one of them. So they all have one. Plus one, plus one counter at least. They all have lifelink as well. We'll swing in with the big ones in the air that he can block, but it won't do anything. And he won't block it with the Ventral Reaper because it will just die. It doesn't get the Aetherios trigger. Replicating Rings going to trigger during his upkeep. That's fine for us because it doesn't do anything. And it's probably not going to or save him. Kaya gets the Aetherios. So he just scoops. Great for us. Game four. Our hand is looking very interesting with the Intangible Virtue in the Servo Expedition or Exhibition. I guess that's fine. We do have enough land. We have plenty of it to play Rosy Cotton. We're going against Nico Bolas, a Ravager, so he's going to make us discard a bunch of the cards anyways because that's what it does. He just wants to get his commander out there as quickly as possible. He does red for Thriving Isle, so it's a red-blue tap land. That's perfectly fine. We do have enough mana, so we can cast the Defiler Face Faith unless he makes us discard it. So we're going to do the Intangible Virtue. Next turn, we go with... Mentor of the Meek actually might be the better place. We can get some draw because the Rosy Cotton won't trigger. Let's see what he plays or ends up playing Psychic Corrosion so he gets to start milling us. That's fine. We're going to do Mentor of the Meek here. Pass it back to him. So next turn, he can get his commander out there, making us discard a card, which we're just going to discard a land. If he does get a land out here, that is. Let's see if he plays a land. He does, but it enters tapped. That's kind of sad. And he gets a Behold the Multiverse. So he gets to Scry 2, Draw 2. And Mentor of the Meek next turn is looking really good with the Servo Exhibition. Or the Rosy Cotton might be also a really good play. He gets some Millas quite a bit with the Behold the Multiverse and the Psychic Corrosion. And let's see. He does nothing there. So we do get even more stuff. I think we go Rosy Cotton here so we can get more triggers when Mentor of the Meek will trigger. And we... Do you get to put the plus one plus one on Mentor of the Meek? We do get auto pay here. We're going to get a Ozolith. That's really nice. We're going to swing in for three. We can go down to 22. Nico Bolas is looking a little scary because he does have enough mana to play that now. He has plenty mana, actually. He probably drew that off of the Behold the Multiverse and Gante's coming out here. Okay, so we don't even know what he gets to exile off the top of our library with the top four cards he can stick it a random one hopefully it's not something like a swords of plowshares or a board wipe because that would be a little scary for us we're going to do the ozolith here and then we're going to do one of them i think we can just do the raise the alarm so we do get a bunch of triggers here from rosy cotton and mentor of the meek we do get a couple from rosy cotton and a couple from mentor of the meek we're going to auto pay for both so we get a rumor gatherer and a planes so that's kind of sad and we don't want to attack because of the gaunti it has death touch psychic corrosion is going to mill us some more cards we're down to 73 in our library so he doesn't mill a lot so that's not much of a problem yet let's see what he ends up playing he does the leonin war leader from our deck that's interesting i guess he could have chose that unless all the other were land or something that didn't even help him i think we go to filer of faith here and we can go with a servo exhibition or no we we can't even cast it anyways we go birth of Miletus here obviously either way that was a better play we created one one from defiler of faith 
So we get another trigger. We don't get the Mentor of the Meek, though, sadly, because we have no mana to pay it. So we get a Rosy Cotton trigger. We're going to put a plus one, plus one on the... I guess we put it on one of the tokens. So it's going to be a 4-4, four, four, so we can kill the Gaunti, guaranteed. Even he gets a plus one, plus one on it. Or the Leonin War Leader might be even the better target, thinking about it now. It does have Vigilance because of the Intangible Virtue, and he's taking a little bit to decide what he's going to do. So he gets to blink it. We do get the plus one plus one counters on the Ozolith, so we will be able to move it during combat. So it didn't do much for him, but it did do a little bit that was annoying enough. I'm gonna put it on the other token, so it's a 4-4 four, four now, so we can kill the Leonin War Leader if it swings in and both the tokens that it creates. He mills us more. We're down to 69 cards in our library. And let's see what he's gonna do here. Leonin War Leader is gonna be a little scary, but we also have some really good responses with Horn of Valhalla. So next turn we can do it for five if we play the land and waste all of it on that. I wouldn't say waste, just use it all on that. Get a bunch of rosy cotton triggers. But he does get a spell pierce. And does he have an open island? He does not. So we're okay to do the Horn of Valhalla. And I think he's going to make us just discard two. We just discard, I guess, the Rumor Gatherer and the planes that he can see. So he doesn't know anything that we have in our hand now, which is good for us. So next turn, we're going to definitely do that. Ooh, the Smothering Tithe is also looking really good, though. We're going to do the... I guess we put the plus one plus one on the 3-3. Three, three. Well, it is now a 3-3. Three, three. We're not going to do Mentor of the Meek. We're just going to spend all of it on the Horn of Wahala. Use it for five. The Yes Guard's Call. Using all of our mana for that. Create a bunch of one of those. We get no Mentor of Meek triggers because we don't have enough mana for that. But we get to put a plus one plus one on all of the ones that we just created, which is really good for us. So next turn, we're going to be able to swing in for a bunch of damage. And let's see what he's going to end up doing. Oh, we do have to still attack, though. And I don't think we will, because we're just going to wait and see what he does. Because Lean and War Leader creates his stuff, but it's just going to get blocked. I guess he can gain some life off of it, because they do have a lifelink. Or he might play his commander and make us discard something. And then our set, he's going to minus again, making it go down to one. He gets to get something else. Let's see what he ends up getting. Thank goodness we missed the spell pierce because that would have been really annoying. Thank goodness we knew that he had it and he had no land. Okay. That's a really scary big dragon planeswalker. Okay, so we can remove one of our creatures or do the like amazing ability by exiling what did he get off of exile cigar to summons okay he might as well play it if he gets any plus one plus one counters which he is going to do and let's see if he swings in with anything he does not and we do get in johnny wow that's really good for us i think we go smothering tithe here we're gonna pay it anyways off of the defiler because we have a lot of life to work with or quite a bit anyways and we will with the johnny next turn when we play it or next play actually we're gonna put a plus one plus one on the soldier we're not gonna pay any mana here i guess we could have but i don't want to lose much more life we could go a johnny here we get another one no mentor of meek trigger because we don't have any more mana to pay we're gonna put it on the new one that we just created johnny we're gonna plus the johnny to make or gain a bunch of life we're not gonna make the two two pride mate we, I mean, we could have, but we don't really need to. And I think we'll swing in with all of our tokens at... I guess we can swing in three or four. Actually, we'll just swing in all at him, because next turn, even if he does do the Nico Bolas again, he's not going to get something super great, unless he gets our dragon that we have in here, which will be scary, because it has flying and it creates more tokens. And we're just going to swing in with everything at him. Let's see. He's probably going to block with both. He's going to double block. Okay. That was a misplay on his part. Okay. So he's going to take 12 damage. He's going to go down to 10 life. And we do get rid of the Gaunti. So that's really good for us. And we do get a couple of Ozolith triggers because they had plus one plus one counters on them. So next combat, one of our creatures is going to get a lot bigger. I think we're going to use it on the Rosy Cotton. Smothering Tithe is going to trigger. He makes us create one, so we get a plus one, plus one counter. We're going to target the... I guess we can target the Mentor of the Meek. 
and let's see what he's going to play. He might play his commander just to discard our last card in our hand, but he's probably not. He has to play something else, or he might die, or he's probably just getting lucky or looking for something lucky off of Nico Bolas, plus ability. That's what he's going to do. He gets a, a Johnny's Welcome. That's really funny. He gets nothing off of that, basically. Same with Cigar to Summon's last turn. I guess he can gain a life off of it. And he plays a land, a mountain. That's kind of sad. I'm sorry. You're losing to a person who makes pies for a living. Nico Bolas is coming out here. You have to discard the Servo Exhibition. That's whatever. We play the Horn of Valhalla next turn. Put it on one of our big creatures. And he just scoops anyways. Great for us. Game 5, we're going against Cranko. That's really fun. We get a Johnny's Welcome and a Star Pupil. That's going to be really fun to go against. Cranko is never a fun commander. I think we'll keep it. Even though we do have one less land player commander, I think that might just be the best play. We're expecting a turn one goblin, obviously. And there it is, because all the goblins are cheap. There's a land that we needed. I think we go a Johnny's Welcome next turn, go Star Pupil or something else that we get. And turn three, go Rosy Cotton, so we can start getting stuff out there. Let's see what he plays turn two, Conspicuous Snoop. Conspicuous, same thing. It's a snow-covered mountain on the top. Why does he have some that are regular mountains? And there's a snow. Okay, whatever. We go Star Pupil here, get a life off of the Welcome. And next turn we go with the Plains into the Rosy Cotton. Moria Marauder. So he plays that. That's fine. I guess he just gets another essentially conspicuous snoop out there. And he has a Swiftfoot Boots on the top. Swings in for a total of a lot of damage. We don't really... I guess that's going to be 4 damage to our face. We don't really care because we can gain it back. So he's going to get the Swiftfoot Boots. And he's going to get nothing else because or yeah yes he he's gonna get a kazool's fury and a goblin ringleader and he has a goblin trap finder on his library on the top anyways off of the conspicuous snoop so we're gonna go with the rosy cotton here we're gonna get a foo token and a johnny's welcome trigger as well as another rosy cotton trigger on our star pupil we're going to keep it to where we don't have to swing in let's see if he plays his commander let's see if he has another land which he does definitely and he's probably going to play his commander. Oh, he plays the other Krenko. That's also going to be really annoying for us to deal with. I think we might have to block that if he swings in with it with the Goblin Motivator. Targeting his Krenko with haste if he does decide to do that. Goblin Trap Finder is going to come out here. He has a land on the top, so that's not going to do anything. There it is on the Krenko. So he's probably going to swing in with the Krenko and the Moria Marauder gets to create some one ones and i think i'm just gonna block them both because next turn we're just gonna board wipe with the vanquish the horde so we're gonna block the moria marauder if it will let me and the cranko as well goodness two blockers no damage will go through the little Moria Marauder dies. Thank goodness for that. And now we vanquish the horde. Everything. And he gets to Goblin Trap. Find something. Gets a secret card with mana three or less. And to make it perpetually cast one less to cast. And it dies. At the beginning of his end step. Okay. So let's see if he plays Cranko here. Okay. Fanatical Firebrand. He's probably just going to swing in for one, or might try and just kill it, or he does Krenko. Okay, that's fine. Fanatical Firebrand's dealing us one damage. He has to sack it, and we get a Swords. That's really funny. Okay, there goes a the Krenko. Can't play it next turn unless he has a land in his hand. And we go with a Rumor Gatherer here. Next turn, we go with Bastry's Lieutenant. And we do to get the Ajani's Welcome Trigger. Let's see what he's going to end up playing. We get another land, so he can play his Krenko again if he wants to. Or a Muxus might be another play that he could do if he has it in his hand. There's the Krenko. And he passes it back to us. So we're going to do the Bastard's Lieutenant. And we basically have the card that he really needs the most right now. The Throne of the God Pharaoh. Get a Scry. I'm going to put the one on the lieutenant 
and we get the mentor of the meek on the top we're just going to keep that there and we're not going to swing in because it's just going to die has six open mana that's going to be really good for him he has seven now with the mines of moria you can see a goblin assault team he has a four one with haste but we can just block it with the lieutenant and he gets a raid bombardment he's probably going to crank out here which he does gets two goblins does he swing in with the assault team probably not because that's just going to die we get the mentor of the meek perfect so we're going to play the mentor of the meek here we get to scry another one with from the rumor gatherer and let's see what we get a land i think we'll keep that on top so we can play our commander next turn we're going to pass back to him. He's probably going to swing in with nothing because it will all die except one of them. One of them will kill our rumor gatherer if we decide to block with it. Krenko is going to make four one ones. Wow. Okay. That's getting a little scary. Jim Palm and Sidorander is going to kill one of our things. There goes the Bastard's Lieutenant. We get a 2-2 with Vigilance. That's kind of annoying. So we get a 2-2 Vigilance. We almost had the combo. But it was bound to happen anyways. Rumor Gatherer. We get to scry another one, but we know what it is already. So we're just going to keep the planes either way. Let's see what he is going to do. He's probably going to swing in with the Goblin Assault team now. Because it can go through and the War Chief comes out here. Okay. So we're going to be taking a little bit more than we bargained for, probably. Swings in with all of the Goblins, I'm assuming. Though all of the one ones. That it and the assault team there it is okay so we're gonna have to block the assault team because that's the assault team and we're going to block one of the one ones with the mentor of the meek here we're gonna keep the rumor gatherer so we can have something at least and the goblin assault team will die that's really good we do take a lot of damage though and it gets to put a plus one plus one on one of his creatures it's probably gonna be the war chief yep Okay, so we're going to do the planes into the rosy cotton. I might have... Sh I probably should have done the food and the throne of the god pharaoh, but either way, it's okay. I'm going to put a plus one plus one. Get the Ozolith, get the rumor gatherer trigger, mentor of the meek. We don't get to draw because we don't have any mana. We're going to pass back to him. Everything has haste, so it's going to be dealing us... We might be dead, actually. I think we are dead that's kind of sad i even if we did gain life i don't know if we would have been able to get around the raid bombardment that card was really annoying so we can't win every game but that's how it is sometimes especially goblins goblins are always annoying we go down to two life and we can't block that we don't have anything with lifelink so we're dead either way and let's see what he ends up doing he does nothing we're just going to block everything we're just going to call no blocks actually let's see what he does nothing and we are definitely dead here oh well we can't win everyone and it's goblins whatever so this deck was really fun to play with i mean yeah we lost to goblins but we were expected to do anyways and we couldn't even got around the raid bombardment but whatever anyways rosie cotton is probably one of the best commanders as i mentioned earlier it's just a very very fun card to play with along with all of the other stuff in here and i wish i wish we could have seen the ancient gold dragon because we could have gained a bunch of tokens out there got a lot of plus one plus one counters off the rosy cotton and just get absolutely ridiculous cards off of it it's just a really really fun card but overall it was just a very very fun deck thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys once again for the 400 subscribers if you did enjoy please like and subscribe it would be so much appreciated and the deck list will be in the description thank you